going to try one time. You might be wondering if the wrecker is still stuck at the bottom of the sand chute, and this video is going to answer that question. First of all, let's get into how did this happen? How did a seemingly experienced professional off-road recovery team end up in the, this terrible situation? He needs help. He didn't have anyone helping him back up, and his front end just fell off. Oh my gosh. I'm starting to think this was a very bad decision to put all of our recovery rigs at the bottom of this hill. It all started with me reading your comments, which some of you think I shouldn't do, but I really enjoy interacting with you guys. One of the comments was, do you think the heavy wrecker will be able to help at the sand chute? Do you think it'll drive out? And I wondered the same thing. And I went to my crew. I said, crew, we should test the heavy wrecker at the sand chute. And not one of them shut me down. Can I add something yes, here? Yes, absolutely. So I come to work that morning. I wasn't even there the day before. And Matt's like airing down a tire and I'm like, hey, do we have a job? And Matt says, no, we're going to take the wrecker to the shoot. And I said, great, I love the shoot. And he said, not that shoot. Not, not the fun <laughs> shoot, the, the bad, bad one, no, the bad shoot. No, this is shoot. the sand shoot. And I was like, why would we do that? So I showed up totally unprepared. I didn't even have my sandwich with me. It's... It's true. Wow. Tom goes everywhere with a sandwich and an orange. Not always an orange, but always a sandwich. <laughs> That's a story for another day. I'm just going to come completely clean here. We did not plan on taking a Porsche Cayenne down there. There was a zero. That was point. my fault. Yeah. <laughs> when did Vin Wiki show up? I get the you're day like, before. Vin Wiki's here to go with us. So they sent us an email. They thought we were in Moab. And they're like, hey, we'll be in Moab today. We want to see if we can stop by and meet you guys. Sorry for the short, short notice. And we want to do a collab with you. So I'm like, well, we're not in Moab. We're in Hurricane. If he's typing that. I'm typing it all out. <laughs> <laughs> and they said, oh, we'll change plans. We'll come to Hurricane. So then I'm like, well, we now we have to do something with these and, guys. And I was like, this is this is going to be the next video, guys. So yeah. I'm not going to change plans and do a different video. We're already planning this one. So Christopher, are you in or are you out? And he said he was in. So <laughs> I don't think he fully knew what he was getting himself into. Oh, right. No, he had no idea. But it doesn't look like we did either. No. No so, one knew what they were doing that day. That's no. It. So we head down in there, and I'm really feeling confident that the wrecker is just going to crawl out of there. Because we've had it out to the Hurricane Sand Dunes, and it just goes wherever you want it to go. And I thought that it would do that. But this sand is a little different than Hurricane Sand Dunes. It's much finer. My money was on the wrecker as well. Yeah. So anyway, it didn't. Well, we didn't have the lockers. The lockers aren't broken. We haven't forgot to install them. And we haven't even been neglecting the maintenance and repair. We literally haven't been able to fit it into the schedule. It doesn't In my fit. defense, I didn't know that was the case. I knew and I just went along. Yeah, so the, the plastic hoses that were for the airlines, they're just not up to the task. They don't handle the pressure. The pressure plus the heat. They won't stay together. We have plans to fix that with metal lines. That'll all be replaced. They will work. Yes, eventually they will work. We're adding bays onto the shop to solve this problem, and someday B roll. When we get the other bays added on, and we kind of unstack all the like, the, we're just stacked. We're, we're we're ten feet tall and wall to wall in here, and it's getting a little old. So, at what point did you know? The we second, trouble. the second run at it. The first run, I didn't even get a run. I just kind of drove up, and I'm like, "Oh, yeah. I'm gonna need more of a run." Not looking good. We're in trouble. So I went back and got a run, and that, like, I felt like I got a pretty good run, and it only went like 40 feet further. And I know from experience that if you don't make it around that first bend, you're in for a long battle, and. I do, and you're right, I, di I didn't have lockers, and I didn't air down. I was at 12 pounds of pressure. That's pretty low, though. I mean, you yeah. can go down to 5 or 6, so when we didn't make it at 12, I was, like, yeah. oh, we're doomed. So at this point, <laughs> Tom was ready to build a shelter. <laughs> yeah. We're in big trouble. 
<laughs> so I'm thinking some of us should build a shelter and some of us should look for food. <laughs> so at this point, I'm kind of in a panic and I'm like, we have got to get this wrecker out of here. I knew everything else could get out of there. I thought the Porsche could get out of there for some reason. There's something I, wrong with it's me. It's like 550 horsepower. Yeah. We were talking about that and I'm like, that thing's going to get up to speed and it's just going to float on top of the sand. And that never happened. <laughs> <laughs> there was no floating. So, so do you think the Porsche computer was depowering that thing before it even started slowing down? I mean, like, yeah. it, it might have floated had it maintained its speed. Yeah. yeah. I think the temperature sensors were throwing it off, and it's like, ooh, I'm overheating. Let's slow down. I don't like bit. anything about the environment yeah. I am in. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, it was giving us problems the <laughs> yeah. entire time. Was, but here's mm -hmm. where things, where in my opinion, things really went sideways. And I'm going to take full blame for this. I, I really miscalculated this. So I'm talking to Christopher. I'm like, so if we don't make it out of here, what plans am I, of yours am I ruining? And Christopher's like, oh, well, I was going to be eating dinner with the B-52s tonight in Las Vegas. But by the time we're, we're starting to calculate where we are, and I'm like, oh, my goodness, we've got to get you out of here. And so at that point, I abandoned the wrecker, which was a mistake, because I think if we'd have spent 20 more minutes on the wrecker, it would have driven out. Yeah, knowing what oh, happened yeah. the second day, we should have just stuck with the wrecker. If, but we weren't thinking clearly at that no. point. If the Porsche wasn't involved, there's no way we would. The wrecker would have been out. Everybody would have been out. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that, that ended up being the real problem. But we took him down there. we got to get him out. Mm -hmm. And the wrecker had dug some ginormous, enormous holes. And that was, you can see the struggle that the Morver and the Banana had. Um, well, the, mo the Morver was up in front, but the Banana probably would have made it up until it hit those holes. Those massive all holes. Speed. Yeah. Yeah. And so then later on when we got the Porsche hooked on there, and it wasn't moving. We didn't even move. We did not move that thing that far with the rig we had until we put... You up on top, mm -hmm. and then the more more bear there, and we were able to slowly pull that Porsche up to where. Well, the rest of the day we just slowly pulled it up. It was winching all day, yeah. One, yeah. One inch oh, inch Badlands inch. Apex winch. We ran the we ran the winch on the more bear for six hours straight with almost no brakes. In out, in out, in out. I wanted to see if the case would discolor because that thing had to be overheating inside. There was like heat waves coming <laughs> off of it. It, lo it looked like one of those oasis in the desert. Is that a palm tree and a, no, a lake? It's what a Badlands winch. Yeah. Oh, that was, it was brutal. So yeah, so you guys saw the video. It was a long day. It was, it was, well, we started the day at 9 a.m. and we rolled into the yard about 9 p.m. Yeah, 9, 9.30. It was over 12 hours. Yeah, so so we had a good solid 10 hours of nonstop work on that hill. But anyway, you guys saw that. Now let's talk about this. Okay, so I feel like getting the wrecker out of there sooner is better than later. And I had the night to think about it. And I was thinking about, you know, what made Jefe's Bronco make it out of there? Well, the Porsche completely smooth the track so that means he's not wasting any energy bouncing into holes and bouncing straight up out of them so that was a huge advantage mm -hmm. so now i know the road is smooth the last thing up out of there um the hard part was have his bronco and he didn't dig any terrible ruts so i'm thinking this is going to be pretty smooth we'll take a rake we'll smooth it out we'll do all the tricks we already know the tricks we forgot yesterday well, we didn't really forget them. The tricks we didn't employ yesterday. But don't worry, we filmed getting it out, and we're going to show that to you right now. But we were all exhausted, and when I looked at the footage, I feel like it, we did not an amazing job of showing what happened. So we're kind of here to tell the complete story, and also kind of fill in some blanks on the first video. So I did a thing that got the record trapped at the bottom of the sand chute, and we worked really hard. <clears throat> Sorry. My voice is hoarse because I've been, well, yesterday was pretty, pretty brutal. Pretty brutal? <laughs> pretty brutal indeed. All right. Well, we've got to go get the wrecker. So the big problem was we tried to take it out of there with no lockers and we tore the road up and then it basically just went downhill from there. So this time we're going to go smooth the road out. We're going to fix the lockers. We're going to fix the lockers 
and then we're going to air the tires down and we're gonna try one time if it does not get out then we are going to reconnoiter canoodle yeah canoodle. we do need to canoodle but anyway i got jake here i'm back i'm back i can't believe you came back i'm back too i'm back not not everybody's coming back for day two <laughs> colby's coming back for day two once again thank you no problem if i could get away with walking up that darn hill one time today i'll be happy well that's the plan so we just got the more of air the wrecker's got to get out under its own power if it doesn't i'm gonna make a call who are we call it i don't know So we've kind of been talking amongst ourselves on the way down here and we're questioning our sanity because we're willingly driving back down where we were. I'm not too worried. I'm not going to take the more very clear to the bottom. I know that it would make it, but it's not important to get this clear down there. And I want to keep the trail as untore up as possible. So we've got a plan. We've got a plan. I'm going to show you that plan. Is it going to work? Not a chance, but I'm going to show it to you. All right, we're getting close to the tip top. We're gonna drive past the tip top down to the middle section. That's where we'll leave the more there. And then we're gonna be on foot, hopefully only for a moment, because the wrecker's gonna drive out after we do all of the upgrades. There it is, boys. Oh, hello, old friend. <laughs> I'm gonna grab a water. Oh, look at this. But oh, that is a quality piece of equipment right there. It's nice, it's morning time, good time for raking. What supplies will you need down there? Um. Oh, that's a good point. I should probably take the supplies I need. Yeah, I, I know you like this hill a lot. But... Yeah, I'm already getting PTSD here from trying to walk up this thing. All I really need is this. I should have everything else I need. Cool it. Down there. So, this. A little bit of water, a little bit of Gatorade. Okay, if you're not familiar with sand trails, it really looks like we tear these trails to pieces and just ruin it for everybody else. But the truth of the matter is it takes about 12 hours in most cases to put them back, I'd say 85 to 95%. If we get a windstorm, then they're 100%. Give, them, give it less than a week, they're gonna be 100%. They're back where they were. So we were just gone overnight and when we went back, the trail almost, like, we did some maintenance, like to smooth it out a little bit, but it wasn't bad. So this corner isn't too bad. This was, These ruts, when Hefe came up in his Bronco. That's where these main ruts came from. So we're gonna fix them up. Uh, I'm gonna just try to rake it up a little bit. It's not gonna do much, but it will help a little bit. What does that Matt say? 11% better. Try to knock some of these rocks I find into the ruts. A little traction. I just remembered you only have one of your batteries. The better for hill climbing. This ain't a bad day in the office, to be honest. Hopefully that gives Matt some traction. And hopefully we're not here again all day. Those holes were gone. Those yeah. holes, there was, there were 30 inch deep ruts the day we were the day before and those were completely gone the next day so if you're worried about tearing up the trails it's just it's sand and it's it such just a weird sand dune because it just had brush all over it but yeah. if you go out with sand dunes right now the worst is after a rainstorm and 
traffic just travels through it and it makes these big old ruts in it. But the next day, they're all gone. They're just gone, yeah. It looks like a mountain when you look at it, but it really is just a sand dune covered with sagebrush. So we actually flew a drone today, just flew it over there to check it out. And you can tell there's been some motorcycles up and down it since we were there. It's just back to normal. You think they were looking for the wrecker? Yes. <laughs> I'm glad we disappointed them. So back in the 80s, if you were to drive down this trail, you would have had two options to get out. The trail goes down river, crosses, and then goes up into the kind of the industrial part of Hurricane. That's private property, and there is a gate at the top of that road, and it is locked and illegal to use that locked gate. So there's no way out there. The other way out that used to go out was the old North Dump in Hurricane, and there's a road that goes up there, and it's like at the top of Main Street, or yeah, that it comes is out Main right Street. on Main Street. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There used to be a way out of there. That's all Turtle Reserve now, and uh, mm -hmm. Confluence Park is up there stuff. So if you tried to come out that way, you could probably do it, but you'd go to jail when you got to the top. So there really is no way out. You go in and you go out. Mm -hmm. And or you that's go it. To jail. Or you go to jail. <laughs> Turtle jail. <laughs> Turtle jail. Yeah. And then continuing on down the river, like I, I don't. Yeah, you're not. You can't drive down the river like that. So we have out. pulled people out of the river that have attempted that. Yes. Have you? Do you have a recovery of that? Yeah. Are you well, trying to drive down that river. Well, yeah. Well, it's a there was a jeep and a Ford Ranger. All right. So I've just gone straight from the tank to the lockers. One of the problems we're having is this tea's getting hot and then blowing apart like it with the pressure. So I'm going to just wrap it up with tape just to help insulate it. I hope I got the right lines. So I'm gonna tape it up. It's all the heat just radiating up off of these headers. Seems like this should help. A lot of air gaps in there. Wrap it really loose. I know this isn't the best kind of insulating tape, but it may just do what we need. Best insulating use of non insulating tape, the award goes to this guy. Yep, I think we're down to coolant now. We did lose a little. Oh, we're puking out coolant. No, you're overheating. Well, we're puking out coolant. It's a sign that we're warm. So if you look here, this fan has no shroud around it on 50% of it. It's just out in the open. That's a problem. I'm curious to see how much we lost. I know we lost some, but I don't think it was a, like a really significant amount. Look at that farmer up there. I wonder what he's growing. I hope it's success. This engine's always had this scuzz in it. I don't know what it is. Whoever owned this engine before me, well, I'm gonna take that down to the river and wash it. Whoever owned it before you, what? I think they put some, they like had a, I don't know, leaky heater core or something and they put some of that stop leak yeah some sort of stop leak in there that's pretty good so some of y'all make fun of us because we call this a river and they're like that's a creek where i come from well in the mojave desert we take what we can get and this is our river oh that is just scuzzy gross <laughs> Ew. Scuzzy. I don't even know how full this was. I don't know if we ever like really burped this. Well, we lost more than a gallon. We brought the perfect amount. Um, Jake, do you want to start this? Yep. Yeah, we'll just kind of circulate this a little bit. Get the air out of here. 
all the air will end up right here because that's how we made it. You can see the air coming in. Okay, push the button on there that says air compressor. We lost about a third, a third of our coolant, which was more than I was guessing, but I don't even know if we started completely full. After the last time it was boiling over, did you add any? I don't remember. I know that we haven't been vigilant in um, anything. So I'm thinking if I let the air out of the tires and lock it, the wrecker might do this like it should it should climb out of there i'm doing the math we've got enough horsepower mm -hmm. we've got enough flotation uh, we got enough traction we should be able to get out of there and mind you my calculations are all in my head and i'm not using any like accepted math systems <laughs> my money's always on those calculations though because they've always panned out eventually. So, yeah. <laughs> so, i think i've probably got 14 pounds in there i think we're going down to eight pounds eight pounds got 12 pounds in here that one we can't get to yeah that's got a tube in it we can't yeah. we can't really get to it i'll look at it it's the last one though we got down there i remembered that we had put an inner tube in the right front record tire when we were on the hanging tree trail with robbie and the problem with that mm -hmm. inner tube is the valve stem comes out and it points right at the brake rotor and there's like three quarters of an inch there so you, and you can't get to it from the front or the back. So I decided we're gonna just leave that tire alone. We'll leave that one at 12 pounds and we'll put five pounds in the other three tires. So that's what we did. It's 9.5, should we go less than that? 8.1. All right, so Jake just got his shirt all soaked up in the river and we're sending him up top because he's gonna hold a camera up there, which is important because that's how you guys get to see what this is. So he's gonna go over there and just lay under the shade of the more of air until he hears the wrecker fire up, then he's gonna get in position. Between farmer Jake and the Porsche Cayenne road grader. Uh, you feeling pretty good about it? I'm feeling pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> And let's see what this one was at. I'm curious if I was 12 pounds up here or 10, what was I? 12.9. I think I'm gonna take the front down to seven. Not that it matters. And then this one's probably it. That one's gonna be at the same oh. as this, 14 or, or 12, I mean. Really pointed the wrong direction. That's all we got. I think the Bronco was the equation that we really didn't take serious. Like it probably should have been the first one to go up and out. Let me tell you, Knowing now, let me tell you what the Bronco's got going for it. It's got big tires with low pressure, mm -hmm. lockers front and rear. It's got a powerful turbo engine and it's got a smooth shifting 10 speed transmission. Yep. And it spools up fast. Like there isn't yeah. hardly any tur turbo lag. That was a great substitute for the Can-Am. What tires are you running on that? Uh, those are the Milestar Patagonia XTs and they're 37s. How are they doing in the sand? Obviously good. Obviously. Good enough to get out of that trap, so. Yeah. yeah. Liking them, mm-hmm. Yep. So I know Hefe was nervous. I was riding with him that day and he was nervous all day wondering whether he'd get out of there or not. And he was ecstatic when it went out first try. So he, he, kinda, he hasn't had it that long, but it proved itself to him that day. How much air pressure did you have in the uh, That's the lowest I've ever put it and it, it was at eight. Okay. Eight, eight, or eight to ten, somewhere in that range. And I think the banana and the Morver were in the six and a half. Because we aired them down, we started at 11, right? And then yeah. you aired them down to five or six. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, I want to verify that I have my lockers on.
So one thing on the video we didn't talk about, we always do a weather report, but we failed to do one that day. And it was 105 or 106 degrees, and it was just grueling hot out there all day long. We were exposed. I, I know my ear was peeling a few days later from a sunburn. <laughs> yeah, it was incredibly hot. We we thought we were going for like two or three hours. At least I thought we were going for a couple of hours. So we didn't have a lot of water with us. And by the time the wrecker got stuck, that sun was, you know, straight up in the air. and. It was really getting to us and after we put in all the work of carrying batteries and gas cans and winching back and forth we were dying on the end you went we did not run out of gas it wasn't clear in the video <laughs> that is true. We, we ran out of battery voltage so it's a different kind it of acted battery. like it was running out of gas but it, what really was happening was since the alternator wasn't working when we were running the winch the voltage would drop to shut the engine off. I can say after carrying that battery up halfway up that hill that I would have preferred it been out of gas though because that battery is probably twice as much. I know I didn't carry anything up the hill other than ropes but walking up and down that hill was brutal. You, the video doesn't show how steep it is but it was a workout just to walk up to where the first got stuck let alone the rest of the trail. So we um, ran out of water. We brought water I brought like a liter for myself. We brought water with us because everybody was expecting it yeah. to be like, oh, we're just going to dry it. Yeah, everybody <laughs> everybody two brought two, two hours water. of water. Yep. <laughs> but yeah. thank goodness Colin showed up with well, Powerade. And, and <laughs> I knew where all the stashes of water in the rigs, but everybody kind of forgot about them. So mm -hmm. I was keeping myself as hydrated as I could be, but I didn't realize some people were hurting. And then when Colin got there, I'm like, there's there's water in the banana. There's water in the Morver. I mean, it's warm. I needed something other than water. Yeah. I, like well, we all did. Power it. Yeah. At it's, the at the end of the day, I I'd been drinking water all day long, mm -hmm. and my body wasn't processing any of it. Yeah. You're just, I, yeah. Was, I was sick when I got home, and I just had this big watermelon belly. That's yeah. why I'm surprised you were ready to go back at nine in the morning the next day. <laughs> Hey, you can't I leave your baby out. <laughs> yeah. I don't have That's no in my heart. <laughs> you it. can't have no in your heart. You can't have no in your heart. No is not an option, brother. How long did it take you from getting there to the bottom to get the wrecker to the halfway, the staging point to? From the time we arrived, it probably took probably 20 minutes before we made our first attempt. Yeah. Maybe a little bit longer. I think it was even less. Oh, well, maybe. It was pretty okay. quick. So, so 10 to 15 minutes of prep to get the wrecker ready? Yep. And then, then we drove up. So what was happening was my right front wheel was just digging. So even That's when, the one you didn't deflate. Yeah. So okay. even though the tires are churning on the sand, if they're deflated, they don't dig down. They, they kind of grab sand in front of them and leave it underneath. Well, this wheel's just digging down. So I can feel it dropping even before I stop. 
And so I'm like, oh man, that is really causing us problems. But there's a little trick. When you dig a little bit of a hole, you can back up and then gas through it and then dig another hole and back up and dig through it. So that's what I started doing. The problem is that right front wheel never got on top. It only wants to dig. And so it was dropping just like the day before it was dropping. Mm. And the other three were really, really, really wanting to climb. So I knew that if I could do something with that tire. So what we ended up doing was filling the rut with rocks. And then it was able to climb on top of those rocks and it got up on top and made it through. We'd have had the air, we had the air out of this tire. We'd have done it. You're so close. I'm gonna let some more air out. We only need to go 20 more feet. I could just feel that corner just dropping. So we're going down to five pounds. Yeah. Now I know we said that if it wasn't going to make it, we were just going to go home, but we're so close. I think we can modify and make it. I think we can. up and then once it started going then it just went all the way up to this like the center staging area maybe you were feeling pretty good when you yeah now I, that sharp turn yep now I knew it would climb out like it would go up the last quarter mile of 17% you made it Woo! <laughs> oh my goodness we really really did it <laughs> we're taking a break here Stay keep break Shade break. So the question is, Colby, can you drive this Morver up that hill? Without a doubt. Without a doubt. All right. Leave I'm gonna your let, skills. I'm gonna let you do it. AC off, scanner bar on. You don't have a seatbelt. <laughs> okay. Hold on to that steering. We're oh, high. Lock, lock is hot. Okay. Come on back. Here we go. see Colby's smiling face pop over the top of that. I'm feeling pretty good right now. Like I'm so excited that this is where we're at. Heard it yesterday. <laughs> oh man. So the wrecker will crawl out of there. If we could air all the tires down to this, it would have been a cakewalk. I wouldn't have had, I wouldn't have stopped. I would have done that in one shot. So the wrecker's still a good option for the sand chute. If you got a vehicle, you could drag up. Yeah, cause I could put it where the, where the banana was mm -hmm. and then it could do a lot of pulling from that point. You, you look at how mm -hmm. steep those ropes are going down to the Porsche, but then they're exactly in line with it. And then you're like, oh, you are doing more lifting up than pulling sideways. It was a learning experience, but I don't think I'm ever going to take the wrecker down there. I think the wrecker is going to be the postman up here. I think that's a great idea. And if we get the 6.0 in the Morver, it will, uh, that, you know, that's another 120 horse. Maybe put a little can cam in it. Big cam. A little cam. <laughs> I think the banana does the very, very best. It's just a oh. sand machine. It's a little bit lighter. It's got plenty of power. A lot of people don't understand that the banana has more power than the Morver, even though the Morver's got an LS in it. So now we're on the second part of the climb. We're not out of the woods yet, 
But I sent the Morvair up first, so I put Colby in the Morvair, and he climbed the hill. Um, no problem. The Morvair just does that kind of stuff. And then I backed up with the Wrecker and just got a really good run. And I, I was worried about it because um, sometimes when I have bad luck, I have a streak of it. Colby, do you copy? Well, should we just have faith? It doesn't yeah. matter. We're going to do this. Let's just go. Send it. pretty good um, actually it was super cool because the the wrecker was accelerating up the hill so it has no problem with that 17% grade it did pop out a deer though yeah we're having a problem with it popping out of low range I don't know why it does that but it did close to the top about three-quarters of the way up popped in the neutral and I'm like oh no but then I just put it back in and it started going again Do you copy? Me. Give me the signal when you're ready for us to come up. Uh, I think I'm ready. Okay, let's get out of here. All right, we did it. Oh, I'm so glad. You don't, can't express the relief that I feel right now. We've gained some knowledge. We remembered some knowledge we already had. That was ridiculous. I'm not viewing this as a failure of the record design. I'm viewing it as an in, it's an incomplete project that needs some more systems polished. What would you change to make it so it can get in and out of there? Well, just getting that that one tire so that I could air it up and down, uh -huh. and then. We're gonna simplify the air system. I had dreams of this really complex air system where I could individually, like central central air inflation and some of that. I don't think I need the central tire inflation. I'll just take the time to let the air in and out. We've learned that maximum tire pressure in the wrecker is 14 pounds in the, the back tires when we're hauling a heavy load. And now we know that five pounds isn't an unrealistic number for the back, so we're not changing yeah. tire pressure a great, a lot of volume of air. When we got back to the road, we aired back up to 12 pounds. How long were we there? Was that like 15 minutes, 10 minutes? It wasn't minutes? very long at all, yeah, 10 yeah. minutes max. Yeah, so, so I can go from five pounds to 12 pounds on three tires in 10 to 12 minutes. So that's not too big of a hassle for me. I think it's worth simplifying the machine and trading a little bit of extra time to air up and air down. That was a lot of fun. He made it up one shot. What's Pretty wrong good. with the record? Letting the air out of the lockers. All right, well, <clears throat> so we've got five pounds in both the back tires, 4.7 pounds in the left front, 12 we're assuming in the right front. Before we can take this on the freeway, we're gonna have to air up. I'm gonna put 12 pounds with all four corners. We're gonna have a good day. And we're gonna put hard lines in. We're gonna use brake line, um, steel brake line, and and other such line. So I always envisioned this wrecker as being street legal and, and being somewhat roadable. So we decided to try to drive it back home instead of bring a truck and trailer to pick it up. All right, we got the tires aired back up and we are gonna take this, we're gonna drive this back to the shop, which will be the longest on highway trip it's ever had. Not super long, but it is. it will be the longest.
we had an eight mile trip back to the shop from where we hit the pavement there and the wrecker actually did pretty good it's got it's showing some promise of being right it's never going to be a porsche cayenne but it will drive on the road what was your top speed so the fastest mm -hmm. i've had it's about 45 miles an hour on the road or on the trails like gravel road okay but it drives really comfortable about 33 miles an hour that's not exactly uh you're not gonna be taking it on the freeway all right we made it back to the shop Everybody here is glad to see us. They thought that it wasn't going to happen, right? Not true. Oh. I had faith the whole time. Rory had faith. Paul had faith. Hefe had faith. I might have been faith. lacking a little bit of faith. Okay, Jamie. <laughs> I figured you'd get out somehow. Oh. Well, we did it. I have word from some of the other recovery guys in the southern Utah area, the greater southern Utah area. Paul from Fab Rats thinks that his record will do the sand shoot. And Rory says he's willing to throw his hat in the ring too. And then all the way up from Oregon, Cascade area, Casey Liddell says he wants to bring a track Jeep down and see if it will do it. A track, a track Jeep. Jeep. So what about the Bombi? People keep asking, would the Bombi just cruise up and down that? You leave the Bombi out of this. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you guys think? Would you like to see Paul? From Fab Rats, bring Grandpa Sherm's tow truck to the bottom of the sand chute. Rory, bring Trail Mater, and Casey Liddell, bring a tracked Jeep, and see if those three yahoos can have as just as bad a day as I had. It really depends. I think two vehicles is the right amount of vehicles to take down there. Out of time. No, you have to send them all down yeah, at the I'd same time. Yeah, send them all down. Good luck. Give There's them water each, at the top. Give them each a little water bottle and send them to the bottom. <laughs> so I'll just put the wrecker at the staging area. Yeah. yeah. And then charge them for help. For <laughs> inch? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, well, let us know in the comments if you would like to see the some really poor judgment again. being filmed again. <laughs> more, more poor judgment. More poor judgment. Thank you guys so much for coming with us, and thanks for watching. I would like to point out that the Wrecker, we've only had it running for like six months. We haven't had it in every scenario yet. Um, it's not finished, which isn't a choice I'm making. It's just the facts. It's not finished yet. Um, we are working on it, even if it's just in spirit. But we are working on it. But we're still learning. Sometimes learning is fun. Sometimes learning is hard. Sometimes learning hurts. <laughs> I'm, I'm sick of learning. <laughs>